idea for the series, I used to do um, workshops around the country for a company called Wild Goose. And they were a lot of hands-on activities that were kind of ooh and ah, cool stuff. And I, you know, they, I went through a training for those workshops and they would, um, I did them the way the other people did them at first. And I realized that they were just, the, the teachers were learning some stuff to do in the classroom, but they had no idea what was going on with the science. And so I started altering the workshops. And instead of just doing the fun activities, I would use those as a precursor to explain the science to them. And then I started asking the teachers, you know, when I was doing these workshops, um, what if there were like a series of books that helped you, that were activity based, that helped you understand basic science? Would you buy those? And like everybody's hand would go up and they'd say, yes, God, we love, we really need that. You know, and so I realized there was a market for it. Um, so I knew then that I wanted to write these kinds of books. And um, it was, you know, sort of the, the idea is like a science for dummies sort of series, but you know, obviously you can't use that name and yet I don't want to insult the teachers. But at the same time, I was looking at a, um, there was a book called um, From Book Idea to Bestseller and it was how to get published and, and said well, one thing you have to do is come up with a title that is really catchy. And at the same time, there was this lady, I don't know how many people know, know about her these days, but um, the lady had almost no hair. Her name was Susan Powder and she did this thing on fitness and it's called Stop the Insanity. And she was, she was like, you know, stop the insanity, you've got to, you know, get your life together. And so I went, stop faking it. You know, that's what teachers are doing. And so that's how the title came about. Um, well, I knew I needed artwork. And I was <laughs> writing the um, first book. And this, this also goes back to a previous professional we we, we were <laughs> we, 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 we were going to form a company with some people, and they had contacted Brian, and he did some preliminary artwork for this company, and I'd seen it, and it was just fantastic. I said, "Man, this guy is really good." So when I came up with the idea for the book, and I knew I needed an artist, then I called my friend and said, "Who's the artist guy? Give me his phone number." And so I called Brian up, and I said, "I'm writing this book." Do you want to illustrate it? Yeah. So I just, I, I said, well, are you willing to do this? And he said, sure. And so he did all the illustrations for the first book. And I would, I don't know if I was actually scanning pictures and sending them to you or scanning sketches, Ben, or what I, I might have even been sending them by hand. I don't know. Yeah, by I, regular I mail. I think you were sending them by hand. Yeah, because I, cause he lived in Chicago. I, I live in Colorado. He lives in Chicago. And I never met the guy. But we talked on the phone, and he agreed to do the books. And so I just would give him sketches, and he'd come back with something that did not resemble what I thought I sent him because my sketches <laughs> were so bad. <laughs> and we worked back and forth, and um, you know, eventually he he came up with all the illustrations for the first. I didn't pay him a, a dime, and I wasn't making a dime. And then it took what five years? Yeah, about five years before we found a publisher. And it was NSTA, fortunately. It was really fortuitous, <laughs> you know, that, that we ended up here. Um, and it was, it was nice, though, because when I had something to show people, it was fully illustrated. And so we kind of went from there. So, I, you know, as far as I'm concerned, the illustrations sell the books. Although, I can't say, I have to give you more royalties. Well, then I'm a bigger <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, That's what you said before. <laughs> But the writing is important too. The writing is much more. The writing is more important than the illustrations. But the illustrations are good. <laughs> <laughs> well, in math was relatively easy um, because math permeates all of physics, and so I had a lot of ideas about how to um, how we ought to be teaching math and, and and what what teachers needed to understand. Uh, well enough in order to teach math well. Um, but I've also done uh, a little bit of earth science in the air, water, and weather book. Uh, for that, I had to do a lot of research. I, I had to learn the stuff myself. I, there was a, a great 
there's a USA Today book on weather. It became my Bible. And I went through and learned everything I could find out about weather and weather patterns. And with the chemistry, it was, you know, I'd taken chemistry courses. But what really helped me was at the same time I was working on those books, I was helping my daughter with her college courses in chemistry. So I was studying at the same time she was. But it was, it was a matter of um, relearning a lot of stuff. And... It was in, in some ways helpful because when kind of my, my, um, my inspiration for helping people understand physics was that I got to graduate school and started teaching as a, as a teaching assistant and I realized I didn't really understand it well myself and I, I knew there was a better way to explain things to people and that it hadn't been done very well for me and I wanted to change and help help teachers do that better um, and so that kind of revelation I looked at physics in an entirely new way so in, in many ways when I started teaching physics it was I was relearning the physics I was, I was learning it for the first time in, in many ways uh, and so it wasn't all that difficult like say going into chemistry and just taking a fresh approach um, now the thing is that it's chemistry from a different perspective than a typical chemistry textbook. Um, the uh, the pers I was working with a person, Michael Kralik. Now this, this helps too. The two people who really helped me in chemistry. Uh, Dr. Michael Kralik was a consultant with me. He's a, a guy who actually introduced me to Brian. <laughs> Ann Cutler um, helped me with uh, the second chemistry book quite a bit in her review process. And she helped me learn chemistry Michael helped me learn the chemistry and but it was it was a different perspective it, it was like a, a physicist perspective on learning chemistry so you know some chemists don't like the way it's the chemistry books are organized um, it's not traditional there's not any memories I try and really stay away from memorizing things uh, I really want to help people build an understanding of, of concepts so when I go into a fresh new area, I'm, I'm, I, I have to do a lot of research. Uh, eventually, I'm, uh, the next stop taking a book will be in earth science um, one of these days. And I've still I've done a fair amount of research in that area, and I, I've gotten everything from basic freshman geology books to graduate physical geology books. And I'm just going through them and saying, how am I going to do this? so that people will really understand it rather than this textbook in front of me that isn't going to help them because it's it's too dense it's too abstract how am i going to make it understandable for them you know parallel to this we do a, a column in science and children every month and we try and cover all areas there's always there's biology questions there's chemistry questions there's earth science questions and we'll come up with a question that we're going to answer that month and quite often I have no clue. I just think, oh, that's cool. I wish I knew something about that. And so I go research it and find out about it. And then I come back and can write about it. But unless I learn it myself, I can't, can't do it. Yes. Yes, I've learned quite a bit. Uh, everything that the science teachers in high school were trying to get through to me just now clicks 20 or so years later. Oh, that's what they were talking about. Um, so yes, I, I do learn quite a bit. So as, as he learns it, I learn it. So it's it's uh, it's interesting. It's fun. Um, I'm able to grasp the basic concepts <laughs> or refresh my memory, uh, looking back at them, so I can uh, you know talk to friends and stuff. Say, hey, you know, we happen to have a book on that. And yeah, do you know why you do that? And they'll say, well, no, not really. It was in my kid's chemistry book or whatever. I said, well, it's because this reaction takes place or because of this law or whatever it may be. Oh, really? Well, yes. Yeah. So it just so happens I work on <laughs> science books, and for $20 or whatever it was, you can have the answers to all this. <laughs> what, what, what existed before I started writing these books? Um, and still exist today, were sets of activities for the classroom. And, and these sets of activities for the classroom have little soundbite explanations of the science. And 
if a teacher wanted to really understand the science behind what they were doing, they would have to go to a high school textbook or a college textbook or take a college course. And that's really difficult for most of it. It's really intimidating to do that. And so the purpose of the books is to help the teachers understand their science at a deep level, not understand everything. They don't cover everything. They are, they're not textbooks. They're, they're not complete in that sense. But what we do cover, we, we do it conceptually. There's not a ton of math. I use the math when, when necessary. And, but, but I try and, and make it, I, I call it deep understanding. That, that they're going to come out of this situation and they're going to say, like Brian said, I get it. Oh my gosh, I finally get it. And I've had so many people come up to me um, after I do workshops or after they have they've used my books and they say, oh my gosh, I finally understand this. And that's what I'm shooting for. Um, and so certainly there's a lot of elementary teachers just, they, they haven't had the science background. It's not their fault. Um, they don't get, in, in many states, at least in Colorado, um, if you go and take an undergraduate course in college, you get no credit on your pay scale for that. You have to take a graduate course. Well, if they're going to take a, they're not going to take a graduate course in physics. They're going to take a graduate course in education. They're not going to shore up their content. And um, so the, they, they have very few places to turn. Plus, in uh, high school, more and more teachers are teaching outside their subject area. You get a lot of people who have had maybe one or two courses in biology, or they're about say they're a biology major. Maybe they had a course in physics, maybe they didn't, and all of a sudden the principal comes and says, "Guess what? <laughs> You're teaching physics next year," and they have no resource except they have to plunge into. And so, my books help serve as a bridge for those people. Um, you certainly wouldn't use my books, you know, there's not the depth of content if you're going to teach a high school physics course, but to get that basic understanding before you tackle that other resource is, is good for them. Um, but in general, you know, I, I, I think primarily in terms of elementary and middle school teachers who just simply don't have the background and they're faking it and they know they're faking it. And so, in, in fact, NSTA was one of the few publishers, I, I shot this to lots of publishers, lots of agents, and most of them would say, well, we can't use that title, you know, because that's insulting. And NSTA was one of the few people who said, we love this title. It's perfect. And the teachers are, are not offended by it. They say, yeah, you know what? You're right. I've been faking it. And so they're really grateful for it. Um, so anyway, the, the, the point is, is that these are, they're, they're, they're books for the teachers to understand their science. Now, we're also starting to do a set of classroom activities to go along with the Stop Faking It books. And we have one down one on Force in Motion right now. And the next one's going to be on energy, and we're going to eventually try and do them with, with most of the books. Um, but the, I think more importantly is, is a providing the, the, the basic stop faking it books provide a resource that's missing for most teachers, which is, it's, it's good for them, but it's also why it took so long to get it published, because the publishers, they didn't see that as a, a need. They, you know, they'd, they'd never done that kind of thing. And so the trade book publishers would say, well, this looks like an educational book. And the educational publishers would say, oh, it looks like a trade book. Or why don't you turn this into an activity book? instead of what you're doing. And so, you know, NSTA in their infinite wisdom, you know, figured it out, you know, so things have gone well. <laughs>
really bad sketches. <laughs> and I say, this is what this needs to look like, and especially for the technical illustrations. I thought your kids were doing the sketches <laughs> first. <laughs> and so I, I would scan them, send them to him. He'd send something back to me, and I'd say, no, that's not right. It's got to do this, this, and this. And, and eventually, it would get bad enough. Usually, with, with each <laughs> chapter, we, we'd have to have a phone call. And he'd say, what are you trying to do here? But we worked together for, like you say, seven years yeah, before seven we years. ever met, and which is just amazing, you know. And 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 it's and then when we, the first time we did meet in Kansas City, then we went out to lunch and we we laughed all lunch. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, and and and, and I'd like to say something about what Brian brings to the books too. Um, pictures. Pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Besides that, the kind of we have similar senses of humor, which are really kind of off the wall, and he brings the kind of card. The technical illustrations he does really, really well, and then he puts in this decorative art. And it used to be I tried to give him ideas on that, and then I just <laughs> stopped doing it because the ideas that he came back with were just so much better than anything I'd thought of. And I, every time I get an in fact, the cover of the first book on Force in Motion, when he first sent that to me, I just started laughing. And I said, this is perfect. This is just right. He's got the humor behind what I'm trying to do. And so most of the books have cartoons throughout them. And he'll send like three cartoons and we'll choose one. Yeah. And with, with uh, books, we've got, we're, we've, we're talking about we've got a come up with a book of rejected cartoons. Um, when I do the column, he, he comes up with like four or five. And every one of them At make least. me laugh. And I think, God, these are great. Some of them are totally inappropriate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you just have to draw them and send them. <laughs> and he sends them off. And I say, no, they're going to reject this one. But I like it anyway. You know? So anyway, he, he's just really creative. And he, it's amazing how he takes the other thing he does, and I'm, I, should, I should probably let you talk about this, is how you come, you know, why don't you talk about how you come up with like the characters and the themes. Because once, I, I know he reads and understands the books because he comes back with some sort of thread that ties everything together. I try to. Yeah. Well, he's, he, originally he sends me chapter by chapter. And so I'll do the illustrations, but it's really hard to grasp what's going on through the entire book without having all the chapters there so I can read through it and say, oh, I, I can follow this now. Usually there's a chapter here and a month or so later, get another chapter. <laughs> and I had to go back and refresh from memory. What was the first one about? Um, so when he's able to send uh, all the chapters at once, I can say, okay, here's a, here's a theme or th that's running through the whole, uh, the whole book. So I can you know, put stuff together and say, well, I can base all these cartoons or create a character and have it run throughout the book so it's a little easier for people to follow. Yeah, and we, and we talked earlier about him understanding the science. All you have to do is look at the cartoons and you know he understands the science because he gets the joke that is in, you know, he gets the humor that, you know, I, I try and write off the wall a little bit but I also want, I want to explain things well. And he, he just, he comes up with the, the humor behind a concept. And it's just, it's just, it's great, you know. So it's been, it's been great working with him. He's drawing from the perspective of the teacher. Yeah. He doesn't quite grasp it. Yeah, yeah. Like, That's well, the, and so I'm actually drawing them for you and the editors. This is what we're seeing. This is, the, this is how we understand the concept. This is how inane it, it, it appears to us. <laughs> yes. And, it also, and he's also, it, it's, it's good. When he doesn't understand something, I know I need to rewrite it. And I didn't do a good enough job. Um, but you know, typical of that is like the cover of the math book with this person. That is a is it a kid that's on the on the bed? No, it's, it was actually a, a friend of mine. A grown up. Mark, so she's like, under the covers are all these math monsters, you know, that are creeping out to come and come and get her. And it just it just no, perfectly no, no, captures. No, actually, it's well, it's, she, it's she, numbers she, and stuff, she's right? On, she's on the bed. And <laughs> okay, bunch, I got it wrong. <laughs> and there are a bunch of monsters behind her. And the thing that she's afraid of is creeping oh, yeah. from underneath the bed That's it. is math. And my friend actually went through that. She went back to school to get a degree and was failing math. And I, I sent her 
the original copy of the book, and she passed the class, and she understood what was going on. You, so. you never told me that. Yeah. I thought I did. Cool. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> so it works. Yeah, all right. Yeah.